Hi everyone, welcome back and today I will be working on Vogue 1387, the Rebecca Taylor pattern. This was released in their spring collection. I'll be working on View A and for the fabric I'll be using this black chamoose. I will be using the matte side as the public side, the side that's going to be showing out. So the first detail on the front of the pattern are these pleats that radiate out of the shoulder seam. Then there is these two buttonholes. This is going to be used so that the drawstring, which is in the front of the pattern, right here, could go through. Now, and as you can I was see looking at here, they want you to use these one by one inch scrap of fabrics to put over the buttonholes before you make it. And I suppose this is some type of stabilizing that they're doing here. Um, but I, I can already see that this is going to be a disaster with me personally. So I am going to use um, one inch blocks of fusible interfacing. I might actually use two, two layers of it. Um, and I think that is probably gonna work better. So we'll see how it works out. Instead of using those one by one strips of fabric, I'm gonna be using two pieces of interfacing and they're gonna be fused to each other and then fused to the fabric. So I just got done fusing those two pieces of interfacing to the back side of the right front piece. And now I'm going to mark for the buttonholes. These are a half inch in length. However, I am going to use a 5 8 of an inch button to make these buttonholes because I feel like these are a little too small and I need more wiggle room as always. <laughs> When I do my buttonholes, I always do a test swatch to see if I like the type of buttonhole that I'm using. So this was my first one, and this is the second one. I think I'm going to go with the first one, the thicker one. And this is the way it turned out. Yeah, I really do like how the way this interfaced um, treatment looks on the fabric itself. This is the facing. So first you're going to turn it over 5 8 of an inch and run a narrow hem. Then you're going to cut off as much of the seam allowance as you possibly can. Now to finish this, presuming that your sewing machine has the capability of moving the needle, you want to position the edge to the edge of the actual foot. And then you want to slide it all the way to the right and then start stitching. And the end product is going to look like this. So both top fronts are finished so it's time for me to assemble the back. The back yokes are attached to the back and there's some gathers right here. What I do is that I concentrate the gathers right in the center because this is charmeuse and it doesn't take to gathering really well. So instead of doing the gathers all along the, um, the marked areas, I just concentrate it in the middle and that's how you're gonna get the effect of the gathers. I'm about to attach the top part of the yoke which is going to make the neckline. The top part of the back yoke has been stitched to the main body of the back. The most important thing here is making sure you pin down the seam allowance for the shoulders and make sure all of that is based down before you start. Put your little pin there so you'll make sure that all your seams line up. I'm going to flip it over and understitch it right now. So now we're on the inside of the back yoke and the top stitching has been made on the neckline. The pattern wants you to slip stitch this area closed 
but I think I'm gonna do a stitch in the ditch on the right side because I really do not like slip stitching I mean every time I think about slip stitching I think about stitches coming out um, so that's what I'm gonna do there and for the back here this is the lower back and this is the yoke I am going to turn the seam allowance down trim off the excess seam allowance and baste this down here base down the shoulders and do a top stitch on the right side of the fabric to anchor this down So this is the inside of the sleeve treatment on the blouse. To begin with, this sleeve treatment comes in two parts. There is the sleeve band that goes around the whole circumference of the armhole and there is this small yoke, V-shaped yoke that goes in the center. That's to provide a little bit of coverage so that no one will see your bra when you, you lift your hand up. This was a challenge for me. I'm definitely going to say that because I spent so much time trying to put it in. What the pattern wants you to do is at first you're going to um, make your side seam. Then you're going to add the sleeve band. So whether you pin it or you base it, you're going to do that next, which look like this. And then the last step is to insert the yoke and that is where I had the most problems and I'll tell you why the sleeve band has these two points that when it comes down to the base here it basically overlaps and it causes you know, the the um, armhole in the bottom here to have some bulk so it was all about how how to fit everything in so that it is flush in the bottom well I'm here to tell you that there is no easy way to do this you're going to have to pin it and flip it over and check to make sure everything's lined up and when you feel like you're good with it then you base it and stitch it in now this is the outside of the sleeve and remember what I said about it overlapping in the bottom here well I did not like that so I end up cutting my sleeve bands so they ended at an inch above the end point of the yoke to prevent that type of um you know that that overlap that you're going to see that comes in the bottom here and i don't know if you want to do that when you make this top but it worked out well for me because you see how flush it is now because it doesn't have that additional um bulk of the fabric that's what I did. So to begin, I lined up the left and right buttonholes of the upper bodice and machine based them into position. Then I marked where the end of the buttonholes are with two pins and made a stitch. This is to prevent me from stitching the buttonholes into the seam. Then I stitch the side seams together as I've discussed in episode 73 and then I pinned and made the full seam to attach both pieces. I then turned the seam up and basted it down to form the casing and run the stitch on the right side. I used a quarter inch black elastic for the tie bands and use an elastic threader to insert it through the buttonholes and casing. To hem the flounce, I surged at the bare edge of the fabric all the way around, of course, and I did a quarter of an inch narrow hem on the right side. So this is the finished look. Get up here a little closer. I like the asymmetric hem because it goes down, the flounce go down in the front and then it comes up on the side and then it does the same thing in the back. It's a close up 
here of the drawstring. I used the shiny side for the outside of the drawstring. Wrap. The pleats. The yoke. So, would I recommend it? Yes, I absolutely would recommend this top. It's a lot of work, but it's definitely unique, and I think if you like it, you should take the time to make one for yourself. All right, let me show you guys the look of the day. I chose this Rebecca Taylor top pattern because it can be used to layer under jackets in the cooler months or by itself in the warmer months, making it a great transition all year long garment for my work closet. I paired it up with McCall 6654, which is made out of a lace printed double knit. For today's look, seeing that the weather is very cold, I added a wool blazer and leather booties. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will be back soon.